Good evening and thank you so much for being here. So you chose me over football. <laughs> and honestly, that has to go as one of my biggest wins so far. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you uh, to everybody who has made this possible. Thank you for having me here today. It's a huge, massive pleasure. I don't get the opportunity to come up to Manchester very often, but this is an extremely worthy cause, so thank you very much. Um, just as I've been introduced, my name is Yewande Akiola, and I'm an engineer. It feels like a therapy session when you, when you start off with those you know, two sentences, right? Um, but my journey uh, into the world of engineering um, as you'd probably hear this evening, um, is one I am hugely grateful for. Um, I feel so fortunate and so blessed to be in a world that really allows me to be the very best version of myself. I've titled tonight, Global Citizen Reporting for Duty, because that's what it actually really feels like. When I reflect on the journey so far, um, I'm just incredibly grateful for this universal language that I've had the opportunity to speak, even in spaces that haven't been exactly designed for people like me. Um, and as you'd see from this image here, um, that ex experience has really spanned different worlds um, it's gotten me um, in spaces that I would never imagine um, that I would exist in, and I'm really, truly grateful. So thank you as well for being part of my journey tonight. Um, I was born some 30-something years ago um, to uh, Vera and my dad, uh, Jonathan, uh, in the southwestern part of Nigeria. My dad was a uh, civil servant. He, he rose to um, uh, Speaker of the House of Parliament for the Western region of Nigeria, and my mom, an artist. Um, and I was born in a city that was at the time regarded as the second largest city in Western Nigeria, um, surrounded by lots of beautiful culture, um, located originally on seven hills um, with a lot of history, uh, lots of military activities um, in the 1800s, a really significant strategic point for Nigeria as we currently know it to be. And not far from where I was born, Ileife, uh, according to the Yoruba culture, which I'm part of, Ife is the place of origin for all of mankind. <laughs> very, very, very bold statement, but yes, I, I've accepted it and I'm rolling with it. Um, and deities like Odudua and Obatala really revered in the area, so really a deep, deep sense of belonging, a deep sense of culture as well. So I grew up with all of this, art, architecture. My mom was um, a lecturer at uh, one of Nigeria's foremost universities. She lectured fine arts. Um, and everything from textile design to fine arts to architecture were in her daily vocabulary. Um, and so as a child with my sister, I would spend hours on end exploring the buildings. And many times she didn't know where we were, which was really, really bad uh, for <laughs> for her sometimes, because she would really just go into panic mode um, whenever we turned up. Where have you been? Where have you been? But really, it was such a wonderful playground for a five-year-old, for a six-year-old, to really be in this incredible immersion of architecture that was influenced by art and culture, but also influenced by, in quote, foreign architecture. So there was a little bit of Italian influence, there was a little bit of German influence. And for people who know architecture, you, um, I'm sure you'd <coughs> recognize uh, some, some brutalist um, features in some of the pictures up there. But then also, we used to spend a lot of time 
with the people that my mom looked up to. So Demaswoko, who is one of Nigeria's, you know, best architects, you know, he, he, he is a real statement maker with some of his buildings. He lived in Ibadan and my mom would spend time under his mentorship. Um, she became quite close to his family and so she would drop us, my sister and, and myself, uh, drop, drop us off at uh, his house um, while she either went back to work or she went shopping. Um, and so whether I knew it or not, I was influenced by the idea of expression and the idea that you kind of absorbed what you saw around you in terms of culture, in terms of the way people lived, and you expressed them through art in the spaces that you existed in. Damaswanko had built, literally hand-built, this building here. And he decided that he wanted to create a space that young people would be able to come to and see their history, see their heritage. And so everything to the chairs that we sat down on were hand carved, always telling a beautiful story. He had an amphitheater in his back garden. I mean, who does that, literally? But it was a space where actors and actresses would come and perform, and we would go with our candles and really be mesmerized by this art of expression. So I ended up doing a lot of this. I would, to my mother's dismay at the time, steal her paper, lock myself in the corner of our living room and work till 2 a.m., 3 a.m. in the morning, creating models of what I thought would be better homes for us to live in. She would wake up in the morning and I'd say, Mom, we need to move. And she'd ask, move where? I'm like, that house. And she'd go, where are we going to build it? How are we going to find money to build it? At this point, my, my, my dad had sadly passed on. But there was this idea that with form and structure, you could really just harness your imagination to create something beautiful, something that was aspirational. This was me in my teens. I used to spend hours making these house models, and then I got really lucrative with them. I started to make models and take them to school and get the kids in my school to pay for them. Um, very, very, very lucrative. Um, and, and then I got caught. <laughs> And then ha that had to stop. Um, but then my story was very much embedded in architecture. Um, and then I started to think about what I might end up studying as a degree. Architecture was my thing. I was going to go and you know, become the world's best architect. But then my mom got involved, as she did, um, and then asked that I considered engineering. Um, I know she wanted me to be able to fix her car because that car was always breaking down. She had a Passat 84 and literally I always had to push it to start, literally. Um, and she'd go, oh, oh, can you just push a little bit quicker? We're going down the hill and you know, yes. But I know she wanted me to be able to do that. But also I think she was influenced by her father. Um, as you can see him in that picture, he was a civil engineer. Um, and he worked on bridges across Nigeria. And actually, he's, his job was to design the bridges. And when there was, um, you know, Biafra War, for example, his job was to blow up the bridges. So his life was very much, you know, around structure and infrastructure. But I think she was influenced by him. And this, this sense that he really could express and have an impact on people's lives through engineering. And so when it came to getting a university degree, my plans were to go down to South Africa and follow my architecture dreams. But mom encouraged me to consider engineering. And so I ended up 
um, at Warwick University in Coventry um, on an engineering degree that had a bias towards developing countries. That was the only compromise I was willing to make, to be able to find a way of giving back to the society and the community that I'd come from through engineering was really a dream come true. And what a revelation it was. I feel like I stepped out of Nigeria um, with, I guess, that feeling of not knowing exactly what I was going into. But I stepped into Coventry. <laughs> I, and Coventry is not half bad, right? We, since the Commonwealth Games and everything, it's you should go come visit sometime. But I stepped into Coventry exposed to the world because everybody that was on that degree had come from different parts of the world. There was a raw, beautiful interest in bringing sustainable development to their different parts of the world. I had an incredible tutor, Colin Oram. I had incredible lecturers. Um, and we will do everything from designing donkey carts to designing water supply systems and hanging out in Mahankleth at the Center for Alternative Technology, which was amazing because all of a sudden I started to see this convergence of my world you know, with the world that I had stepped into, and it made so much sense. Engineering started to become this universal language that I could speak in Western Nigeria, I could also speak it in Mahankleth in Wales.